previously on Science for All. Now this is a map of the world, probably not the one you're used to, and my question to you is, is this map wrong? And now the answer. The way we see the world affects the way we draw maps, and the way we draw maps affects the way we see the world. Now this map is just our classical map, turned upside down and centered on New Zealand. Because why not? Putting these considerations aside, this map, which when turned upside down is called the Mercator projection, is actually wrong. For one thing, Greenland is not that big. I mean, when you look at this map, Greenland seems just as big as Africa. Well, it's not. Here's how Greenland and Africa appear on the Mercator map. Now, let's put the two lands on the same scale. Is that it? No. Is that it? No. Is that it? Yes, Greenland is just that small. Or rather, Africa is just that big. The US would fit not once, not twice, but three times within Africa. More generally, in this map that we so used to, the distances are extremely misleading. Countries in the middle of the map which are near the equator are squeezed, while countries up there and down there near the poles are stretched. Now you might think that this is not a big deal, but in fact, historically, maps have played a crucial role. I mean, think about it, a lot of kings back then wanted to have the biggest country. So drawing maps in which their country was bigger was a way to convey their power. So in the 1970s, a German historian named Arno Peters decided to change the map to make a map that is faithful with the actual sizes of the countries. We now call it the Carl Peters projection. And you can see on this projection just how big Africa is and just how small Europe is. Now, as you may guess, this map created a lot of controversies. People realized that their countries were not as big as they were and it looks somehow less nice. And this really tells the bias that we have. We like the way our usual maps are. And this really tells you how much map affects our understanding of the world. So why don't we use the Gal Peters projection from now on? Why doesn't Google Map use the Gal Peters projection instead of the Mercator projection? Unfortunately, the Gal Peters projection is still wrong. That's because when you look, for instance, at a country like Norway on this map, and you zoom in in this country, the shape of this country is not its real shape. It is somehow vertically squeezed. Conversely, the amazing thing about the Mercator projection is that the shapes of the countries are always the right shapes. In mathematics, we say that it is a conformal map. Wait, what? what's a conformal map? What do you mean? The idea of conformal maps is that when you zoom in on a country, the left, right and up, down scales must be the same. And that's not the case with the Gal Peters projection. When you zoom in on Norway, you can see that the scale of the left, right direction is very different from the scale of the up, down direction. And for an application like Google Maps, this is crucial because one of the most important features of Google Maps is this cool zoom in that you can do. In your screen and you don't want the shapes to be distorted as you zoom in. That's why Google Map went with the Mercator projection. Wait, are you saying that the Mercator projection is the only conformal map? No, no, no. There are plenty of other conformal maps. On his website, Jason Davis lists many different maps of the Earth, many of which are conformal. And I think it's pretty fascinating to look at them. After all, each map is a nice mathematical construction. In fact, the mathematical study of conformal maps, which originated in the late 1700s with the work of top mathematicians like Lambert, Lagrange and Euler, led mathematics to new horizons, especially with later contributions by Gauss, Cauchy 
and Riemann. For one thing, Gauss and Cauchy drew fundamental connections between conformal maps and the calculus of complex functions. But could we make a perfect map of the world? Surely, if we're trying to make it a rectangle, there's little chance that we can because remember the Earth is round. But what if we cut it in a different way? Maybe in this way, or that way, or that way? Is there a way to make a perfect map of the Earth? Well, the answer to this question leads us to talk about the prince of mathematics, the great Karl Friedrich Gauss, regarded by many as the greatest mathematician of all time. And the theorem that he proved in this case is called Theorema Ergregium, which in Latin means remarkable theorem. Well, imagine you could make a perfect map of the Earth in a flat two-dimensional plane. Then the thing is that if you draw a triangle on your map, it should correspond to a triangle on the Earth. But the sum of the angles of a triangle on the plane always add up to 180 degrees. But on the Earth, Gauss found out that the sum of the angles of any triangle on the Earth always exceed 180 degrees. But then we have two triangles and if the map is perfect, they're supposed to be the same. Well, they're not. So the map cannot be perfect. So in fact, even tiny portions of the Earth cannot be represented using flat sheets of paper. And this means that Adidas, unfortunately, will never be able to make a perfectly round ball by gluing flat sheets of paper. But there's much more than that in this theorem. This theorem says that there's something very fundamental about surfaces, and it's the idea of curvature. And it can be measured, crucially, by looking at how the sum of the angles of triangles increase as the triangle increases. I mean, if you draw a very small triangle on the Earth, the sum of the angles will be nearly 180 degrees. But as this triangle increases in size, the sum of, this, of his angles will also increase. In fact, the sum of the angles of a triangle can be as high as 270 degrees on this figure, and even close to 540 degrees on this other figure. But you can take this even further. This idea of curvature can be generalized to higher dimension space. In fact, Gauss started to envision the possibility that our own universe, our own three-dimensional universe, was itself curved. Yeah, and he did that just by studying maps. Isn't it amazing? In fact, you might say that because we've been drawing flat maps of the Earth our whole life, we have had this tendency of thinking of geometry as something flat. Maps have been affecting the way we think about our universe. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, despite the fact that I talked to you about triangles, especially on the sphere, but I haven't told you what a straight line was. And that's what I want you to think about for next time. What's a straight line? So what is a straight line? This is what I want you to think about for next time. Please share this video if you enjoyed it. Please share it on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus, where you can also follow me. And subscribe to this channel if you think uh, it was worth it. Uh, I've also put here two links. The first one is a link to a science for article written by Scott McKinney on map making. And the second link is a video by uh, Vsauce on map making. And I hope I'll see you next time. <laughs>